There is roughly just over a month before the official conclusion of the 2023 hurricane season, although tropical cyclone activity can go beyond November 30th. In the Caribbean, we will be taking a look at what is happening and what could happen because models are hinting that there could be development, there is some variation and we're going to get straight into it and the areas which could potentially be at risk as we head into November. Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update. So let's get straight into what is happening and we're kickstarting things looking at the Atlantic on a whole. So that up there is post-tropical cyclone Tammy, which may try to reform. Matter of fact, the National Hurricane Center is giving it a 30% chance of doing so through both seven and uh, two days time. So it may try to regain some tropical or subtropical characteristics uh, out there, potentially being a hybrid. So regardless of though it is going to be bringing some impacts to Bermuda, maybe some periods of heavy rainfall, some gusty winds, and of course, those rough seas through to the weekend. So it is nearing the island uh, right now with all this activity. And then as we look out into the main development region, there is some moisture out there, but I uh, will be focusing on the vicinity of the Caribbean. So let's first go to Northern South America and the South Caribbean. So quite a bit going on for portions of Northern South America, Colombia headed to Venezuela and even for Guyana. But over in Suriname, things are a bit drier as forecast this morning. And then as we look up, we can see a portion of the Windward Islands, even the ABC Islands as well. A lot of moisture in the area, a lot of activity. So maybe there has been some periods of some heavy downpours, even some thunderstorms popping up here and there. And then over into Panama in Central America, we can see that uh, a lot is happening this afternoon. So there could even be periods of flooding across areas experiencing a lot of heavy rainfall. Now let's drift further up to the north and uh, further into Central America, some spots in Nicaragua and even Honduras, especially offshore, the Bay Islands headed over toward Belize and close to Ambergris Kia as well. We can see that there is a little bit of activity across the area, but uh, there we can see our main uh, area. And by the way, there is a surface trough and usually where we find these troughs, there is all this activity associated with them at times. So the axis is just around there and models are suggesting that it will be drifting up to the uh, west-northwest and it could eventually bring along with it a rainfall increase for the Turks and Caicos Islands, the Bahamas, even for Florida as well as we head into next week. So we'll definitely be watching for that. Even some signs that it may try to develop, but that is not solid as of right now. But as for the Caribbean, we could definitely see something form. Again, there could be some periods of heavy rainfall as a result of all this increase in activity as a result of that surface trough. But I want to bring your attention to the Northwest Caribbean. Notice that uh, we're not seeing anything like what we're seeing. Uh, we're not seeing all these colors indicating all that convective activity taking place. So there was a front in the area and then uh, with these fronts coming down, they bring with them cool, dry air. So that is the reason that dry air is kind of helping to stabilize the atmosphere so there isn't all this convection, there aren't all these thunderstorms developing, but uh, there are some periods of rainfall when some of these clouds are moving through these little patches. So that is the kind of activity across portions of the Northwestern Caribbean, even headed up to the uh, Bahamas, Turks and Caicos Islands, and even for Florida as well, and down in the Yucatan. And across some of these areas, it's also quite windy. So let's go ahead and look at this map here. And it's getting pretty gusty when we see those darker shades of blue, especially for the Bahamas and even some strong gusts at times for the Caribbean islands and even toward the Yucatan. So uh, going to the Cayman Islands, Cuba, Jamaica, maybe even portions of Hispaniola, we can see that uh, there are those shades of purples, those darker purple shades heading on to those blues. So quite windy out there today. And even with these strong gusts at times, don't be surprised if you see a couple of downed trees, especially those weak ones and even the power going out as a result of those impacts. Now, here is a map of that dry air as I was talking about. There you can see it being marked by those shades of yellows and oranges and reds. So a lot of cool dry air helping to stabilize conditions. So there isn't as much rainfall for some areas compared to yesterday. Most likely some intermittent showers moving through. That sunshine and being in and out, in and out right through the day. At least that's how it's been for my area. You can let me know in the comments how things have been progressing through the day for you. Now, I showed you guys this map at the start of the video of the sea surface temperature, and this is an anomaly map. So those shades of oranges, especially as it becomes more and more vibrant, those orange and red shades indicate warmer than normal temperatures. 
it's very very warm in the Caribbean and not only at the surface but there are deep warm waters so a lot of energy is sitting around to support whatever tries to form but uh, the big inhibiting factor would be wind shear if the shear is very unfavorable if those upper level winds are very strong then we won't see much development but if they relax even for a little bit we could see something try to get itself together quite quickly and once something forms in the Caribbean someone will be affected by whatever tries to develop and typically we want to look to the South Caribbean and even if uh, something does not develop there could still be some very dangerous impacts because it takes way less than a tropical cyclone to uh, result in very dangerous conditions. A little blob of activity developing in the afternoon can be enough to unleash some flash flooding across some areas so it really takes less than that but if we're talking about a low pressure area low turn around for a couple of days that spells trouble in terms of that rainfall activity even those landslides and mudslides especially to those who are most susceptible so uh, we'll definitely have to keep our eyes on the area all islands should be keeping watch but especially over in the western caribbean that would include areas such as jamaica going to cuba the cayman islands central america and with these systems drifting up there could be a problem for florida or even the bahamas as well but uh, we're going to be taking a look at what models have to show in a brief moment but we want to go over into the eastern pacific so this disturbance here is designated as invest 92 east some models want to show something quite interesting happening with this some of that activity making its way over into the western caribbean so uh that would be very interesting to see play out and even looking at the track guidance we can see that the future of it in terms of the track remains pretty uncertain but once it's going to be loitering in conducive conditions it will likely become a tropical depression even a tropical storm and the next name to be used for the eastern pacific basin is pillar so if this develops into a tropical storm once it reaches that threshold it will become pillar all right and now we're taking a look at what the models are showing because uh things are kind of all over the place right now but the general idea or that general consensus is that development is expected so we'll be looking at the four i usually take a look at and of course we're starting with euros all those green shadings represent all that moisture that precipitation rate and uh there's the time up there so this is as we're heading out into tomorrow now there's a surface trough as we talked about earlier that surface trough and there we see all that activity associated with it drift into the vicinity of the Bahamas and even to Florida so this is likely to increase the rainfall chance and it may have an opportunity to try to develop into something so we'll see how that goes but the models are not really showing much there's that high pressure area that it would be moving around that is why it's making that track and not just moving out so winds within a high pressure area rotate in a clockwise fashion so as such uh, that is the reason for that steering pattern but then look at the Caribbean there's a lot of moisture around and take a look at that system that storm over in the eastern pacific some other models want to push it into the caribbean where that moisture could try to materialize into something and develop under the conducive environment going on to the gfs model now gfs is showing quite a bit going on out there so as we head into tomorrow going to the weekend we see a lot of increase in moisture across the caribbean that pacific system loitering around and developing uh, it is showing that that trough will try to materialize into something and then then a low pressure area trying to form make its way up to the Bahamas and then as we head into the latter part of next week there we see that next low pressure area forming over in the western Caribbean getting its feel from all those very warm waters that I showed you guys and then making its way up and out now it is important to note that GFS is kind of all over the place with where the system or systems could go but overall it is consistently showing development there are changes and it makes sense because we're talking about something more than a week from now well, some of these systems that GFS is showing so there is some time out and as we go further out in time there are inconsistencies so it is important to pay attention to what the models are showing to see what the general trend is but we can see that GFS is consistent about development but in terms of uh, the amount of systems and where they could head in the intensity that is pretty much uncertain at this point in time the Canadian model let's go ahead and move on here I see that as we head into this weekend again all that increase in moisture there's that trough drifting up to the uh, west northwest and there's that next system forming in the caribbean so again with that uh, developing storm just offshore off central america over in the pacific we could see it all that activity associated with it make its way over into the western caribbean and try to form so the canadian is showing it loitering around gaining some strength before going back inland uh, pretty interesting track there that would just be uh, such a double hit for the central 
American territories. Next and final, we're looking at ICON. So here's ICON showing that again, we'll see development of that Pacific disturbance and that low pressure area forming in the Caribbean. It has been very consistent about that forming and making its way up to the vicinity of Jamaica. And I should make mention that ensemble tracks, while these were for earlier today, are expecting that we could see something form and make its way into the vicinity of Jamaica going up to Cuba thereabout. This is for the Euro and then uh, for the GFS members here. So if you're in Jamaica, my fellow Jamaicans, we definitely want to keep an eye. Not seeing anything will be coming for sure because again, there are uncertainties as we're seeing here, but there is a possibility. So there we're seeing it, guys. Models are definitely hinting that we could see development of potentially multiple systems as we head to the end of October and into early November. But of course, as usual, I'm here to keep you posted. And by the way, the next name for this season is Vince. So it's likely that Vince may form next week. We'll see how that goes. But that's it for now. I hope you found this video to be quite informative. But if you have any questions, please do leave them in the comments. I'll respond once I can. And remember to always be weatherwise.